Hello dear students, now today uh, we are going to see about the applications of tensors. So far you have done few operations on tensors and today we are going to see applications of tensors. So tensors have a very vast application especially if you are into the field of physics and mathematical geometry because you are working with several dimensions uh, uh, altogether. You are working with lot of uh, dimensional data 2D, 3D or ND whatever it is. So the data is represented as a multi-dimensional array and that is where tensor comes uh, into picture. So tensors have a very vast application uh, you know has a vast application in physics and mathematical geometry. Mathematical explanation of electromagnetism is defined by tensor one of the application. The vector analysis act as a primer in tensor analysis and relativity. Also certain physics com concepts like elasticity, quantum theory. Uh, your concept of machine learning, mechanics, relativity, they are all affected by tensors. So as you all know that we are working on to the area of machine learning and deep learning. We have got the entire uh, huge amount of data represented at tensors, especially when you are working with uh, uh, sequential data, especially when you are working with image data, video uh, relevant data, then the data is so humongous that you have to represent it using multidimensional arrays or tensors. Now in the upcoming slides we are going to see how tensors will be applied in its various other forms. So in the beginning of tensor flow I told tensor can be represented as a scalar, as a vector or a matrix. So we are going to see uh, how the applications of tensors are based on what type of tensor it is like if it is a scalar, if it is a vector or if it is a matrix. So quickly moving on. We are going to see the applications of tensors as a scalar. So scalar is a simple number with a zero dimension and then the shape or as you can see two square brackets. Now what are the typical uses of scalars? The typical uses of scalars are the representation of error values. So whatever mean square error that you are calculating throughout your model that is nothing but a scalar. And then other various metrics for an example when you are working with classification uh, you have got a precision, you have got recall. So they all of these are scalars. When you are working with any model when you are predicting the accuracy of that model then that comes as a scalar. So all these things are uh, the places where you will be using tensors as scalar. So typical uses of scalars are the representation of error values and various metrics like accuracy, precision and recall. So when you have zero dimension it is a scalar. Now coming to the applications of tensor where it is used as a vector. So vectors are very very common in neural networks. Now for an example in a fully connected network by the way you will see fully connected network in detail in a very short while. So for an example in a fully connected network or when you have a bigger network like a convolution neural network where you have got images as your input, uh, you know you have got the input data also sometimes uh, expressed as vectors. You can uh, every input will have a weight that will be expressed as a vector. You will be having biases throughout the network bias that will be expressed as a tense uh, vector. So all these tensors will be actually uh, expressed as uh, vectors, I am sorry, uh, biases in the CNNs are uh, vectors not the inputs. Okay. So as shown in the figure when you see this, this is a very simple example of a fully connected network. So you can see here that the biases are added, the bias value is added to the output nodes of each fully connected layer and the bias of all output node is represented as a vector which is nothing but uh, concatenation you can, uh, I will just write it for you. So this bias of this particular network is nothing but uh, what you have is B1 and B2. Okay, it is a combination of V1 and V2. So thus now here this particular bias tensor is working as a vector. So this is the typical application where you will use vectors basically in a fully connected network. Now we will see where tensors will be used as a matrix. So matrix is a very very common type of tensor. So I just explained you uh, a fully connected network right. The biases were as a vector but then when you have for an example the shape of a batch input, no, I have already taught you uh, gradient descent algorithm in that batch, mini batch all we have seen. So suppose you have a batch input and then 
uh, you have a fully connected layer inside a batch input. So, what is the input tensor? It is not only uh, the input dimension, but also the batch that you are dealing with. So, now it is a matrix. Okay. So, number of input samples that you are having in a batch here, please do not confuse it with a bias. Batch input here is B and the actual number of uh, dimensions of the, I mean the length of the input is DIN. Okay. So, together they form the input there. So, that is how it is a matrix. So, the shape of a batch input vector, sorry, batch input tensor X of a fully connected layer is B comma D in where B is the number of input samples and D in is the length of the input feature that you are using. So, club together they form a matrix. So, this is the place where you will be using tensor as a matrix and also uh, for an example if you have got uh, a fully connected network with a feature length of 4 okay, and the input containing 2 samples. So, the batch size the number of input in that batch is 2 and the number of features that you have in that particular input are 4. So, how do you get that? Uh, you get it as matrix, I mean 2 by 4 matrix. Okay. So, 2 is the number of input and 4 is the number of uh, feature length. So, that is how um, Tensors are used in matrix again the application is in fully connected networks in CNNs. So, when you have input layer and or uh, you, when you give uh, features as the input inside any fully connected network in a CNN the input layer all of these things are the places where tensors will be used as matrices. In the same fully connected network or in the same CNN when you have got when you are giving the biases you have bias represented as a vector. For the same model when you are calculating the accuracy or you are approximating or you are calculating the mean square error over that particular layer, then you have got the same tensor working as a scalar. So, you are seeing various ways in which tensors is used like a scalar, vector or a matrix in the, the different uh, in, in the same uh, network as different dimension and different applications. So, this was the gist about it, how applications of tensors can be used based on whether it is being used as a scalar, as a vector or as a matrix. Now, if I talk on more than two, that means if I talk more uh, above the matrix level, it will be called as a three dimension uh, tensor, right. So, where are the typical applications of a three dimensional tensors uh, in the image processing? especially in computer vision task where you can deal with the 3D data, okay? uh, not only matrix it is a 3 dimension data, image processing mein, video processing mein, where you have got action recognition where because you have sequences of images that are moving. Okay. So, apart from the image of that pixel n by n I also have one more parameter. So, that is how it is a 3D data, right? that is the sequence of the image. So, size of the image, sequence of an image. So, 3D data, so video processing, medical imaging. So, MRI and CT scan, you know it is all a three dimensional image data that it is going to process. Engineering and scientific simulations, natural language processing for when especially when you are using transformers okay? and sensor data fusion for an example in autonomous vehicles. So, these are all specific applications where you will be using 3D data. Uh, 3D tensors. So, you have seen where to use, where uh, what are the applications, where do you use scalar, a tensor as a scalar, tensor as a vector, as a matrix or a three dimensional tensor. Now, quickly moving on to one of the most important feature of uh, tensor which is broadcasting. You have already learned broadcasting when you studied NumPy. Okay. So, broadcasting in a tensor flow is actually a mechanism which will allow the tens, uh, allow us to work with tensors of different shapes. You know, it is not going to produce you any error when the dimension of two tensors are not matching and you want to say add them together or you want to perform some basic operation onto it. So, broadcasting helps you to create a you know uh, data which is error free. So, you have got broadcasting in tensor flow which is a mechanism to allow the tensors of different shapes to be combined and to be operated together in element wise operations. Okay? So, suppose if I am going for element wise multiplication then typically I will use broadcasting and I will complete the task. Okay? 
So, uh, even when the shapes are not same, you can go for element wise operations very clearly by using uh, broadcasting. So, TensorFlow is typically going to adjust the shape of tensors during the operations to make it compatible if possible. So, this is going to simplify your coding and it will up, uh, avoid any unnecessary memory duplications as well. So, already you all know with broadcasting, so I am just giving you a very simple example it is you can recollect numpy and you can work on it so i am just simply doing an element wise addition you can see the shapes of the tensor are not matching so what it is going to do here is it is going to duplicate itself with another 10 20 30 and then add both of them to give this particular result so here you can see in the low dimension tensor duplication will happen and it is going to give you a result so that was about broadcasting.